Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast is a Christ-centered podcast established in 2019 and hosted weekly by Pastor Chris Busher. Addressing a host of topics such as the Great Commission, Christian discipleship, and often featuring interviews with special guests who are experts in their field. The views and events expressed on this podcast and all related materials belong solely to their author and not necessarily to the author's employer, organization, committee, or other group or individual. While all attempts are made to present accurate information, some information may become outdated over time. Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast makes every attempt to timely update any and all such information. Without further delay, here's another powerful episode of Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. Hey guys, and we are back. Thank you for being a part of another Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. Again, I'm your co-host, Dallas Montague. Today is a very unique podcast for me. I'm sitting here in the studio, and across from me is a beautiful woman by the name of Marcelli Montecu. This is my wife, and it's a pleasure to be here with her in the studio. I've never had a podcast with her before. It's going to be amazing. We wanted to take advantage of this time at home during this crisis that's happening, and that's kind of why we're here today is to talk about what God has been speaking to Marcelli during this time at home. And I'm really excited about it. Take a listen. You will be encouraged, I promise. Marcy, how are you today? I'm great. You're great. I'm great too. I'm excited to do this podcast. We've never done a podcast together like this. What do I smell? Cake. A cake. Marcelli just made me a cake and it's actually in the oven right now. I smell it. it. Smells amazing. So we have to hurry up and do this podcast so I can eat some cake. We don't have much chocolate in here, so I needed mm-hmm. to be creative. Yes. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Today is Easter Sunday. Marcelli, how do you say happy Easter in Portuguese? Feliz Pascua. Feliz Pasco. Pasco. Pasqua. Pasqua. Okay. Well, I can't speak Portuguese very well, but today is Easter Sunday. Jesus died and he rose again. He is risen. And we are here today to talk about what Marcelli has been studying in her quiet time. She's been studying about the coronavirus and not necessarily the coronavirus, but she's been studying what God is teaching us through this time. And so I thought it was really cool. She brought it to me and she wants to do a podcast about it. I'm excited because we've never done a podcast like this, and it's pretty cool. We usually do interviews, but Marcelli and I are just going to kind of casually talk about her devotion time and about some things that she talked to me about, so I'm pretty excited about it. So, Marcelli, first off, do you think that this crisis time is God's fault? No, I don't think it's God's fault, but this is a time that you can use to stop all the things that we are doing and focus on Him, just in Christ, just in Jesus, and... This season is not God's fault. Our generation didn't experience anything like this in the history. For many people, this is scary. And many people could be hopeless and Mm -hmm. losing family and losing people that they love. Losing their jobs. Losing their jobs, yes. Losing, we we lost students. Mm -hmm. So this is a crisis. Mm -hmm. But this is not God's fault. I think he wants us to stop a little about everything that we are doing. He wants to shake Shake us. Shake it. I like that. Shake us and wake us up and make us to be focused on Him. Mm -hmm. He can make everything that is bad and become something really good. Kind of shake the tree, right? So if there's stuff in the tree that doesn't belong, God's kind of shaking it out. Would you agree? Yeah. So what is God kind of teaching you right now? What is God shaking in your tree? You're listening to the Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. We'll be right back after this quick word from our sponsors. Have you ever asked yourself where the balloons go when they fly away? High above the clouds is a wonderful place known as Euphoria. This magical place is known as the Blue Knights. Blue Knights are colorful, fun-loving balloon folk whose job is to protect all the children. This is the dream of every Blue Knight to one day become watcher to battle the forces of sharpness and darkness, regardless of the harshness. Visit BlueKnights.com today to join the adventure of the new children's animation film, Balloon Knights. As a father of eight, he understands the need and desire to protect those near and dear to you at an affordable cost. He has a flexible, affordable, and nationwide health care plans to protect your loved ones wherever they travel in the U.S. and internationally. His portfolio plans let you tailor your coverage to your needs, and you can just stay and rest easily. Visit the Health Insurance Dad on Facebook today. So what is God kind of teaching you right now? What is God shaking in your tree? Because for me, 
God's teaching me a lot. I have to kind of be calm and be quiet and where I'm usually thinking about a lot of things, I'm a man. You mentioned earlier that I want to work all the time. I'm trying to find things to do to be busy. And that's not necessarily right all the time. And I've kind of had to take a step back and and really just be calm and know that God is real, know that He's know that He is God and that He's bigger than this. And that's kind of been a struggle for me. Like you said, losing our students in the school and other resources that we have here to live in Brazil as missionaries. So Marceli, what are you doing in this time of peace? This can be kind of hard thinking about uh, someone of our family being sick mm-hmm. or losing jobs and could come the anxieties and or something like that. But for me, I'm trying to, hard to find peace in God and it's working. Uh, some time of worship, worshiping God and thinking about it, about what God wants for me this time, you know. And I think he's talking to me and he's talking to me about let me work in your heart. Let me restore you. Mm-hmm. Let me build in you what I want you to be. And I don't think this is just for me. I I was listening some preachers and watching some some messages and other people are talking about the same thing about being restored by God. He's building something. He's shaking, he's awaking some new preachers, some people that were were sleeping because in the past we heard about many pastors great men and women of God that were preaching and doing great things of God. And now this is the time again to wake up these people, the youth, or even people that are not so young. We need to wake up and serve the Lord, to -hmm. give the Lord the glory. And He is the help for our nation now. Mm -hmm. He is the only one that can save us from this tribulation time. Do you think that God is kind of looking for our attention at this time? Definitely he is, and this is a time for us to have this time with God to let him work in us and try to find the reconciliation with our Mm -hmm. families if we have something wrong with someone in our lives, friends or family. It's the time to call them and say, I'm sorry for the things that I made or say that you forgive that person. It's time to also encourage other people because the people that are sad, in this situation that are in really crisis, they need a word of compassion for their lives. And some people need help, and some people need food, some people need clothes. This is time to show our mercy for people. Mm-hmm. And this mercy can, comes from God. When you're talking about God wants our attention, I keep thinking about this verse in First King 19. And the God is speaking to Elijah, and it says that there was a strong wind and the mountain broken pieces in the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of a low whisper. It's so easy for us to look at all the chaos, for us to look at the people losing their jobs, the people losing family members and all this time. But if we keep looking at the negative things, if we keep looking at the the scary things, the wind, the waves, the storm, it's going to be hard to hear God's voice in that time. The enemy has to be loud to compete with God's small voice, but God is speaking quietly to us. And I think if we look right now and we set our eyes on God and know that He is God, we can hear the small voice and what He's speaking. And that's exactly what you've been doing, is you've been sitting with God, you've been hearing what He has to say, and this is what He's saying, that it's time for restoration. Amazing. I also think that we, in this time, that the evil is trying to speak so loud in our ears that it's everything broke, that's everything bad. We need to guard our mind. We need to guard our eyes, mm. uh, our hearts in this time. Do not watch everything that makes you feel sad. And what are some practical ways that we can do that, that we can guard our eyes and our minds right now? Reading the Bible, worshiping God, watching uh, healthy movies, watching healthy things. Also, use this time to cook, to clean, to organize your house, your mind, also to take care of yourself, mm-hmm. you know, you can find finally this time to stop everything and take care of yourself, being healthy and taking care of your family. Mm-hmm. And we say this time is a time of reset. And how is God resetting this time for you? God has been speaking to my life to forget many things of my past because the past uses a lot of time of our minds sometimes in the present and it shouldn't be wasting our time. It should be something that we are proud of but it's not always what mm-hmm. happens sometimes we have ugly past it's not what i'm thinking in my life it's about more traumas that i need to forget and um, god wants this it's just one step it's 
in front of my eyes and God wants this. And he spoke something to me about the Bible. He always speaks to us. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together and in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Yeah, and that's Psalms 139. Yeah. God wants us to listen to the truth of his gospel, through the truth of his word, and to listen to his voice. Who am I to God? This is, I am someone important to God. Mm. We all are, we all are important to God. And he loves us. He died for us. And we should know this. The identity, right? Who yeah. are we in Christ? We can't forget mm -hmm. it. You, we can't just let the past or the traumas or he, who we were in the past before Christ to consume us. But he wants to build something in us. And he's working. And I think what you said, exactly, that if we focus on our past, we can't look at the future, right? We read that the other day about Paul. Yeah, we can't look. And we should mm -hmm. look forward now. We should uh, let him build on us for the next season. Mm -hmm. What is coming after all this Crazy time. Something I like to preach when I'm preaching is about Paul, our past being a prison for us, right? Not allowing our past to be a prison for our future, but it can be a school that educates us, educates us and teaches us for the future. I totally agree. Yes. Amazing. You should go check on the cake, huh? Is it the alarm? Mm -hmm. 26 seconds. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. Still speaking about the past, uh, sometimes God takes you out from your city. Sometimes God takes you out from the situations that are around you. And he did it to me. Uh, the people that made me feel some trauma, now it's very they are very far from me. But I still have to forget and forgive and put this in the past. And let him change. Let him restore. Let him show me the purpose that I have in my life. And I think he wants this to everyone. Don't let the past bring you the sadness in the nowadays, you know. You have to be brand new in God. And He has life for you. He has something amazing to for you to do, for you to be in the future. And we have to let God work. Let God do it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's funny that in the beginning of this year, 2020, we're all saying, oh, this is 2020 vision, right? This is what God has for us. We've got to open up our eyes. This is... 2020 vision, perfect vision for this year. And now we're four months in, five months into this, and we're thinking, oh no, you know, this is way different than we expected. Nobody expected this to come. Nobody saw this coming, but God did. God has perfect vision. God still saw this all happening. But how has it changed our perspective of the 2020 vision? I, w I think He wants us to see. Mm. He wants us to seek it. Hey, he wants us to see. And what do we have to do to see? Take away the distractions, right? Take away yeah. the things that we're seeing, the things that we're, we're co so consumed with to be able to see. He's opening up our focus, maybe. I agree. That's good. I like that. That's really good. Cool. And what are you expecting when this all ends? What are you expecting when this is over? I really expect uh, for people in the middle of this, still doing in the middle of this, is pray. Pray for everyone. Mm -hmm. For Pray for neighbors. Help the neighbors also. And Pray because he, God is the only one that can save us from this. And he can keep uh, our family safe. We can trust him. We have to trust him. And I think I want to see, I'm pretty sure I want to see in the end of this, people thanking God, thanking mm -hmm. and praising and worshiping God because we got through it and we are fine. We lost jobs. Some, we lost jobs. We had some difficult times, but... We could get vision. We could get something from this. We could learn. We could organize our lives, our, ourselves, our minds, and learn something from God. If we do it, mm -hmm. we are going to be thankful in the end of this. And I hope everyone, every creature of God uh, knows better who God is after all this. And the Christians have to shine their lights that Jesus put in, in them and it, at this time. In the end of this, we got to praise God and thank Him and sing for Him and give glory to Him mm -hmm. because He saved us from all this. And I kind of want to change the question. I don't really want to say when it ends because I hope it never ends, not the coronavirus, not the crisis, but us seeking God the way that we are now. You know, He's providing this space and this time for us to seek Him, to know Him, and I pray that that never stops. 
That should never stop. We should continue to seek him, seek him, seek him, what his plans are, what he has for us. I mean, I'm guilty too. We we spend time with God, but how much time are we spending, spending, spending with God? For example, when we spend time with God, are we just doing it to get our devotions done? Sometimes we fall in that habit. But the devotions, it's do we actually hear from God? Do we actually talk to God when we're doing the devotions? Or is it or in your relationship with God, are you the only one speaking? I do a lot of talking with God. And I don't always take the time to listen to what God is speaking. And I think uh, we need to spend more time listening to what God has to say than always just what we want to say to God. I understand. And I also think that we have gifts that God gives to us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we know what we're supposed to do and serve in God in the church. We are the church and we have gifts. And sometimes we don't know. And when we don't know, we have to seek God to know what is this, what is our, our gifts. And we got to put this in practice. Mm -hmm. We got to do something. Who thinks that wants to do evangelism should do it. Who has to preach. Who who always have a word to speak to some friend, to someone. Maybe should be preaching, studying theology or learning more from God and sharing this with people. Mm -hmm. People that can heal should be using this at this time. Or after all this, we have gifts that we u- should be using for God. He yeah. always going to speak something. He is not going to save us for, for nothing. He is going to use us. And this is a privilege. Mm-hmm. He's going to f- fill us with his love and his glory. And a present is to serve him too. To have a relationship with him. Serve him comes after this. And knowing who we are in Jesus. And that we have purpose. This is amazing. We are not just living in this life for to eat, to have families, to have kids, and to build careers, have a great job, receive money, or something like that. We are here for a purpose, and our purpose is to make other people know about Jesus and also have a relationship with Jesus. Mm-hmm. And I think at the end of the day, at the end of this time, we need to just trust God. Trust, 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 trust God for finances, for family, for health, and other things. For example, your mom is feeling sick right now, right, yeah. in the South, and you can't be there because you're in Sao Paulo. You can't take a bus. There's not even buses running right now, and it's difficult, but we have to trust God that he's taking care of her, right? We lost many students in our English school here. That's how we survive here in Sao Paulo, and we lost a lot of students because of this time, and we just have to trust God. He's our provider. God is our provider. He provides us everything that we have, Everything in this house we have is because of him. Everything that we have in our hands is because of him. The gifts that you're talking about, because of him. And it's all for his glory. And that's at the end of the day, all of this is for his glory. I agree. All of this is for his glory. And so we just thought we would get together today and just talk about a little things that were on our heart. And I had a great time, Marm. Yeah, I had a great time too. Mm -hmm. So. I think that my words are simple and also because this is not my first language, and, <laughs> but I, I think God is developing this in me about talking, about sharing, mm-hmm. and uh, we should share what we have in our hearts, mm-hmm. since it's a good, it's a good thing that comes from God. <laughs> and this is a way that we can use our time at home as well to to still reach people. Yeah, is by using this podcast. This is the way we have to do something that I encourage Dallas and other people that God is speaking to to share about a message, it's Dallas, do something, share something, because what God is speaking to you is something good you should share. And I encourage other people that has something good coming from God, speak to other people, have courage to do it. Amen. Well, guys, thank you for the podcast. Thank you for being a part of it. Thank you for listening. And Mar, would you like to pray us out? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time that we can we can talk and we can share what our thoughts with other people. Mm, we know that we are speaking way more with us. Sometimes we can't speak all of it. But thank you for the opportunity to be able to speak. You're a great, great father. We trust you. We know that you're taking care of us in this situation. And please take care of the the globe, the whole world, about these people dying. God, make them to be healthy, God. Put your angels to take care of them use your people that can heal others god to work at this time uh wake up your people to to pray for others and show your glory 
and your love for others and also use all of us to help when people need help uh, a word of compassion or courage do not let uh, your uh, daughters and sons to be sleeping at this time to be just quiet make them ha to them to be awake and have our families to be restored the forgiveness to come that you can give god bring your solutions god but do not let us get out of this season being the same way that we were in the beginning change us mold us build us make us humble in this moment thank you father for everything you're doing keep taking care of our families we love you jesus in jesus name amen amen you've just listened to the faith and family fellowship podcast with your host, Pastor Chris Busher. Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast was recorded live in studio with final editing made before uploading. Subscribe today to Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast on iTunes or Google Play. For more fantastic daily content, visit Pastor Chris Busher online via Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Don't miss the next episode on Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast.